Hello and welcome to ERPWebTutor.com. This is Aradeep. And in this video, we are going to talk about uh, the Oracle Fusion Essentials. So what are the different deployment options that we have in Oracle Fusion? So let's get started. So this is a simple diagram showing you all the different options that we have while implementing Fusion. So as you know that the Fusion is the next hot thing in the market in terms of cloud-based ERP software solutions. So you can actually have the Fusion software implemented uh, using different technique, so different deployment options. So the first one, you can see that uh, the big picture right on the right-hand side. So that is basically a public cloud options. So you have a data center and you have all those A, B, C, all the different companies. So we will talk uh, in details about each of these uh, deployment options in the following slides. So the next image that you're seeing on the left hand side is the, the private cloud uh, option. So as you can see that you have a data center and you can see all those individuals accessing the data from the data center. Again, we will cover that in details. And then the third option is the on-premise option. Okay, so this is where uh, you have the software and hardware installed uh, on premise at the client location. So let's uh, proceed with uh, the next slides and we will talk a little bit in details about each of these options. So the first option that we have mentioned is the public cloud. So in this model, the services are provided to business organizations on a subscription basis. So you buy a subscription and then you access the software. So you don't need to buy any additional license or you don't have to have any support contract. So no requirement to buy additional licenses or support contract. And the services are hosted over the internet by Oracle or Oracle business partners uh, that offer uh, any kind of BPO solutions. So basically it is hosted as you can see in this image you have a data center that could be Oracle. It could be an Oracle business partner who uh, offer hosting services and then all the different companies uh, are purchasing subscription and accessing the software. Okay, so that's the option number one the public cloud. So moving on to the next option which is the private cloud and it is also the most preferred option at this point, okay? And this is basically a SaaS model. So we have heard the word SaaS. Uh, it's it's a very uh, popular buzzword these days. So this is basically software as a service that stands uh, for SaaS. So it uses the SaaS model where the hardware and software are provided by Oracle or Oracle business partners that offer BPO solutions. So you can see you have a data center, which is not the client that is implementing uh, Fusion. It is actually either Oracle or some business partner providing hosting services. Now Oracle is responsible for overall management, patching, uh, security and other upgrade services. Okay, it could be Oracle or if it is uh, some hosting uh, solutions provider, they could be applying those patches. Now the thing is all those patches and these upgrades, these are all Oracle uh, releases. Okay. So if there's a new patch that is always released by Oracle. So even if it is hosted by uh, some uh, Oracle partner, then they will be responsible and they're trained to apply those patches and those uh, uh, upgrades that Oracle is releasing. And if it is Oracle hosted, then they uh, schedule a window and they tell you in advance that, okay, this has been, this is going to be, um, this patch is going to be applied and there's going to be a downtime and then the client has to prepare accordingly and uh, uh, proceed with those upgrades and patching. Now, this is hosted over the internet for easy access from any locations. Now, a couple of issues that a lot of users faced uh, in uh, those release 12 or earlier versions was the use of that J initiator, which was used to open all the form based screens. Okay. Now that actually had a lot of compatibility issues with uh, the, the Windows version. It also had issues with Internet Explorer settings. So that problem is uh, is gone with the Fusion uh, cloud software. So you can uh, once it is hosted, you can access over the Internet on any 
uh, operating system you can uh, access the the fusion software from your ipad from any tablet or from your phone so it has become very very uh, free access or easy access from uh, any location and also it does not uh, depend on any uh, software compatibility or those kind of issues those have been remediated okay so that is a very positive thing that Oracle has come up with and all the complaints about uh, compatibility uh, should be gone uh, with the Fusion uh, software. So the next option is the on-premise. So this is again recommended for, um, for clients, for big clients who do not want to depend on uh, any other hosting provider to host their software. So they want on-premise. It requires a lot of uh, effort. It requires a lot of hardware and software you have to buy. So in this model, the client basically purchases the software from Oracle and hosting is done by the client themselves. So it's all the hardware is provided by the client. So as you know that Fusion compared to R12 consumes a lot of memory because of the way it has been designed. It requires a lot of uh, you know, high performing hardwares. So implementing on premise sometimes is not the best options unless you have the uh, solid skill set uh, in house. Okay. Now all hardwares are procured by the client, as I mentioned. Now client is responsible for monitoring uh, the security setups, patching and upgrades. So and Oracle will release all the patches and upgrades uh, for the client to install. So unlike the, the the private cloud where oracle will give you a window for applying the patch on the on premise it is more flexible because it is driven by the clients availability and you know their downtime for their production environment they have uh, they can have multiple uh, instances uh, and they can they will be responsible for applying all the patches now oracle again as the manufacturer of the product itself oracle will provide all the patches all the scripts but it is the responsibility of the client's dba team to run all those patches so this is basically again uh, based on what uh, we have seen so far it is the least preferred method at this point especially because of the complexities involved in just even installing the software because it is uh, not many, not many DBAs out there who would have the skill set because it is still in its early stage, and uh, that always uh, is a problem to have the right skills and uh, the right skilled resource to do this kind of work. And it is very complicated. That's the reason why uh, this is not yet a preferred method. Also, the hardware costs is another reason why clients, uh, you know, shy away from this approach. So again, but this is an option for bigger clients, you know, who have the right resources because it's actually, you know, you are, uh, there's no dependency involved in the uh, cloud option. What happens is, you know, you are dependent on uh, the business or the hosting provider for patching, you know, their availability. So those kind of dependencies are there, but on the on-premise, if you have the infrastructure and if you have the right resources, this is, uh, this can be a very good uh, option for the bigger clients. But as of now, uh, this is not a very preferred method. Uh, maybe in the future, you know, soon once, you know, we have this, the right skills in the market, enough of the right uh, skilled resources, this will eventually, uh, uh, you know, get more popularity. But the whole idea behind uh, this SaaS or the cloud option is to avoid, you know, these overheads like hardware, it's a lot of cost. Maintaining those resources is a lot of cost. So just to have the software, it adds a lot of cost. That's the reason why on-premise uh, is probably going to be uh, the least preferred even going forward, okay? So now the next and the last option, which is the hybrid model. 
Now, this is where the client retains their legacy ERP system such as the EBS R12 and uses Fusion for certain products, you know, like the compensation workbench, talent management. And this is also often referred to as the coexistence model. So this is a very simple, uh, this is also again a very simple and very powerful model. And it is also uh, preferred a lot by the clients who are trying to, you know, experiment uh, with, uh, uh, with Fusion. And what it does is it does not uh, force the client to move to a completely new software at the same time. They can go and upgrade to Fusion in phases. Let's say you have the whole uh, HR module implemented, the complete HR suite. Now you can just implement compensation workbench in, in Fusion and you can keep the Fusion and your EBS instances in sync. You know, there are different methods of keeping the two instances in sync. So we will have different uh, sessions on those. So, but the advantage of having the hybrid model and also is also very popular these days that the client doesn't have to go big bang and then completely change their software. And also they will uh, eventually, you know, have a footprint of the fusion applications, thereby it will allow them uh, to you know experiment with the software to get a feel of the software so that they can you know decide uh, make a more informed decision when to move from EBS to Fusion. So it's also a very phased and step-by-step -step fashion so that will allow the client to make a better decision when they you know when Fusion is the T product and it replaces EBS. So these clients using the hybrid model will be at an advantage. So that's basically it. This, these are the different four models. Like I said, you know, the most preferred models are the uh, private cloud where somebody is hosting and then the hybrid model. It's like, it could be uh, this hybrid model is not really a deployment option. It's just an implementation option. Uh, it could be the hybrid model could be, you know, you have your EBS on premise and you have your uh, fusion compensation uh, on the cloud. So this, these are the different, uh, that's why it's called a hybrid model. You can have on premise and uh, on the cloud. So that will be it. If you, you know, have any questions, uh, we will uh, definitely, you know, help you uh, try to learn fusion. We have just started creating contents on fusion and, you know, we will continue to create more and more videos on fusion so people can learn. And, you know, this is something new. Everybody is learning. It is a very hot product in the market. And, you know, that's the reason why we have started creating this content on Fusion. So thanks for watching and definitely visit us at www.erpwebtutor.com. Thanks.